Hello, my dear students. So, welcome to VTO e Shikshana program. So, this is the last session on module two. So, in previous session, we had discussed about working principle of centrifugal pump and working principle of reciprocating pump. So, in lesson seven, uh, we'll be discussing about uh, a comparison between centrifugal pump and reciprocating pump and factors to be uh, kept in mind while selecting a pump. So, reciprocating pump, as we know that uh, it comes under positive displacement pump category. So, this positive displacement pump, it would be used for high pressure applications. For example, uh, an application which requires uh, 1000 bar of pressure to operate heavier load. So, in such a case, we can go with positive displacement pump. So, reciprocating pump, as you can see in the slide, so it would be used for high pressure head application. So, coming to centrifugal pump, so centrifugal pump, uh, it comes under non-positive displacement pump type category. So, this type of pump are used for fluid transport application. That means uh, in fluid transport application, the main uh, objective is to transfer the fluid from one location to another location. For such an application, low or medium pressure rate with high discharge pump is used. So next, reciprocating pump, uh, here uh, the discharge will be less. So in the case of uh, uh, centrifugal pump, the discharge or flow rate is the primary consideration. So reciprocating pump, so it uh, requires a pressure relief valve. That means uh, since this pump uh, will be operating uh, under a very high pressure, so in such a case, uh, if the pressure in the system exceeds the safer pressure, so in such a case, the excess pressure has to be uh, relieved out of the system. So for uh, uh, reciprocating pump, if it is used in high pressure application, then pressure relief valve is a primary requirement. So in the case of centrifugal pump, so uh, uh, it, it is used for high discharge application or high flow rate application where uh, pressure will be less. That means it will be less than uh, 20 bar. So in such a case, a uh, pressure lift valve is not the primary concern. So reciprocating pump, as we know that, so it sucks up small amount of fluid and compresses it and delivers it into discharge line. So that's why it comes under the category of positive displacement pump. So here, reciprocating pump produces intermittent flow or a pulsating flow. So centrifugal pump, so it produces a continuous flow. So it lifts the water or it transfers the water from one point to another point. So next, reciprocating pump, since there is a less clearance between a rotating part and then a casing, so here there is no uh, 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 priming required. So in the case of centrifugal pump, uh, if, it is have, uh, if it is having negative suction height, so in such a case, uh, the impeller has to be uh, uh, supplied with a sufficient amount of water. So here priming is required. So reciprocating pump, it has a cylinder, a piston, and then a piston rod. So it requires a more space. In the case of centrifugal pump, so in order, uh, it can be mounted in a very less space compared to a reciprocating pump. So the initial cost of reciprocating pump, it would be high. So as I mentioned, uh, the clearance will be less. There, it, there is a tight uh, 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 clearance between the rotating part and then uh, how the body. So here, uh, the cost will be high. The fabrication cost or initial cost of reciprocating pump will be high. So centrifugal pump, uh, the initial cost will be less compared to uh, reciprocating pump. So that's why uh, when we go to a purchase, uh, when we go to uh, 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 outlets to purchase centrifugal pump, so for a domestic application, so you can obtain the centrifugal pump of 0.5 HP power or 1 HP power within uh, 5,000 or 6,000. So in reciprocating pump, uh, uh, we need a higher maintenance. So in the case of centrifugal pump, so lower maintenance is sufficient. So centrifugal pump, so it can uh, uh, pump a wide variety of fluids. That means a fluid uh, which contains a solid particles in it. So for example, a slurry. So in mining applications, so a slurry has to be uh, transferred from uh, uh, one location to another location. So in such a case, centrifugal pump uh, fits in. So reciprocating pump, so it requires uh, a very clean and clear fluids. So in reciprocating pump, we'll make use of 
hydraulic oils or petroleum based uh, oils so this is about uh, a comparison between a reciprocating pump and centrifugal pump so reciprocating pump uh, to summarize the reciprocating pump is used for high pressure application centrifugal pump is used for high discharge applications so coming to a specifications of hydraulic pump so for a particular application we may need an hydraulic pump so that application may be requiring a uh, high pressure or high discharge so depending on that requirement we need to choose uh, a particular type of pump so here we have listed out a uh, few of uh, few factors which needs to be considered before buying an hydraulic pump so first the type of the pump so as i mentioned so depending on the application so depending on the load to be uh, operated so we need to choose a particular type of pump in positive displacement pump itself again there are uh, various types like a gear piston a uh, gear gear pump so vent pump and piston pump so in centrifugal uh, that non positive displacement type will be having a centrifugal pump and an axial flow pump so depending on uh, the application like whether it is a, a fluid pour application or fluid transport application so uh, depending on that requirement we're going to select a particular type of pump and then uh, the pump will going to handle the working medium or working fluid so depending on that uh we need to choose a particular type of pump like uh, if you want to have uh, if you want to pump a fluid containing uh, a solid particles so in such a case a uh, positive displacement pump is not the best option so where uh, you want to uh, only requirement is to transfer that uh, a fluid which contains solid particles from one location to another location so in such a case we can go with non positive displacement pump so and then the net positive suction at so this parameter is most uh, important while while uh, going for the non positive displacement pump especially uh, the centrifugal pump so as we discussed in previous session so this net net positive suction at so is a minimum suction at uh, that should be provided to a pump in order to prevent uh, the cavitation so uh, uh, it is the difference between the net positive suction at available and the net positive suction at required so here in order to prevent the cavitation the net positive suction net available at the pump so it should be more than the net positive suction at uh, required by the pump so usually the net positive suction at required so it will be specified by the manufacturer itself so and then uh, we need to go for uh, whether we are selecting this pump for uh, the pressure application or a discharge application so both parameters uh, matter a lot so that is a discharge pressure as well as a flow rate and then the pump speed so we know that the flow rate is dependent on the pump speed so here the pump will be driven by other prime movers so in the case of centrifugal pump so we do use a uh, a motor to drive the pump so here the flow rate of the pump it depends on the drive speed of the motor so that has to be considered so next head so head is nothing but a pressure energy so head is the vertical height uh, to which uh, the fluid has to be lifted up so depending on that uh, we can choose uh, a particular type of a pump especially uh, this pressure head is most important uh, uh, in the case of uh, a centrifugal pump as well as in the case of a uh, reciprocating pump so coming to efficiency uh, so normally uh, the efficiency of a centrifugal pump is less than that of uh, efficiency of a uh, uh, reciprocating pump S since uh, the leakage in the case of reciprocating pump it would be very less the volumetric efficiency will be more in the case of reciprocating pump so uh, the efficiency we know that uh, it's an output by input so in the case of an hydraulic pump the output is nothing but an hydraulic energy so it may be a pressure or a flow rate so in the case of positive displacement pump the discharge uh, or or output power is the discharge pressure so in the case of centrifugal pump the output power is the discharge or flow rate so in addition to all these factors so we need to consider the power drive or uh, so as i mentioned uh, uh, we do make use of uh, the electrical motor to drive the pump or we can go with uh, an uh, an heat engine to drive the pump or we can make use of other uh, sources for driving the pump 
so next the mounting so whether the pump uh, uh, depending on the requirement so uh, it has to be mounted either in vertical direction or in horizontal uh, direction so that uh, uh, mounting has to be taken into uh, a consideration while choosing an hydraulic pump so and then the weight of the pump and then uh, the size of the pump since uh, uh, so for example uh, in the case of a fluid uh, fluid power applications so we'll be having a uh, very uh, uh, a less space so within which we need to uh, we need to uh, house that entire power pack so in such a case uh, uh, this uh, pump size factor is most important so how much space uh, is required for uh, housing this pump uh, that has to be uh, taken into uh, consideration so this is about uh, the factors which needs to be considered before uh, uh, selecting an hydraulic pump so this completes uh, module 2 so throughout uh, this uh, lecture series uh, we have spent almost uh, uh, seven sessions to discuss about module 2 so throughout this lecture series uh, uh, we have come across the concept of boiler so and then we discussed about uh, working principle of uh, babcock and wilcox boiler and lancashire boiler and then uh, we appreciated the importance of uh, boiler mountings and boiler accessories next we moved on to hydraulic turbine so where we classified the hydraulic turbine based on uh, various criteria and then uh, we come across working principle of one impulse turbine that is appleton wheel and then a reaction turbines francis turbine and kepler turbine so in last uh, two sessions we discussed about uh, uh, hydraulic pump so and how uh, the pump uh, will be used for a particular application and then uh, how we can categorize the pump based on a various criteria and then we discussed about working principle of reciprocating pump and centrifugal pump so in this session uh, we have discussed about uh, uh, the factors to be considered before selecting a pump and a comparison between reciprocating pump and centrifugal pump so for this uh, a presentation uh, i have gone through uh, various references so these are some of the references uh, which i have gone through to prepare the content as well as uh, uh, to deliver the content so thank you